observability is actually for more than just the network. Which is why I have Mel here, because, you know, Cisco as an organization has been thought of for a long time, and still arguably is, about network infrastructure, boxes and things like that. But the reality is the network is not just a bunch of boxes in a closet someplace that you run cables into. I tend to just say networked environment because they're, the way that I thought about it before is you don't just build a network because it's fun to build a network. It's to solve a problem, right? So the, the joke that I've, I've, joking thing I've kind of said is no one built the Golden Gate Bridge out you know, in the middle of the Pacific just because, look, we can build a big bridge. They did it because you needed to solve a particular problem. So for us, the network, it's infrastructure. We build it so that apps and other things that actually make what the business needs run, runs their organization, provides revenue, whatever else, makes the business a real thing. The network is there to be a platform for that. However, for so long we've thought about monitoring and looking at what's happening on the network itself, but we haven't really spent as much time thinking about how do we get insight from application owners and developers and correlate that with what we do in every world. So I'm, no, I'm really curious from your perspective, how? How do we get, I know it's important, but how do we bridge that gap? How do we do this? Yeah, yeah, it, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because it was actually a curiosity of mine for a while. It, only because I've been on the operations side for so long. And, and, and I see things like, like messages in logs when I'm sifting, I'm doing a tail F and I'm troubleshooting something. This is from a while back ago, I'm showing my age here a little bit. I'm doing like a tail F and I'm watching the logs. And I'm just going, okay, and, and then the logs all look different. And I'm just looking at the logs going like, where did this come from? Why, why, why is there a timestamp and then some gobbledygook kind of message and then the other one is the message and then the timestamp is somewhere else in the string? But I was so curious to know where that came from. And so I started doing some research and uh, understanding what it would be like to instrument code. I got the application level, to your point, to, uh, and to your question. So I started instrumenting with open telemetry. And so I found uh, how to do things like using trait, like building traces, adding spans, adding additional information using attributes to spans. Mm -hmm. And then it started to kind of dawn on me, I'm like, wait a minute, if you put this together with the other networking that you were talking about, like networking, data, the, the telemetry is coming off of that, together with servers, together with perhaps if it's running in Kubernetes, uh, you're looking at data coming from the cluster, you can form this like almost like layers of a cake. Uh, you, you have data at all these different layers, and then you can correlate them all. So that way, you have a bigger picture understanding of, okay, this transaction, a customer transaction is not going well. Why? There is no button, and there is no like metric that says customer transaction. There's just, it just does not exist. The transaction hasn't occurred yet, so you can't answer those questions ahead of time. And that's what I was going down that discovery, was figuring out like, how do I answer questions that I don't know ahead of time what to ask? I can ask about CPU utilization, I can ask about network throughput, I, I probably can't ask though, like, okay, a transaction is really slow, and why? And it could be a combination of factors, and sometimes it is one thing, but a lot of times it's, a, it's, it's more than one thing put together. It's so interesting that that's the way that you describe this. Um, I love that description, and what's fascinating to me about it is in conversations I've had this week here at Cisco Live with some of our security folks, and talking about XDR and the idea of those technologies that are actually taking a bunch of data together, that I, it's the same kind of challenge, which is a lot of data, but if you don't have you said correlation, but let's, I'll just use a slightly different word. If you don't have context, it's like having a conversation with a person. A yeah, person can yeah. say a phrase, and if you take it out of context, meaning you don't take it in the conversation as a whole, you take it as an individual, almost a sound bite, it could either sound really great, maybe not so great, depends <laughs> on the situation. Yeah. You need context around what someone says, and just as important around your application and your network, all the data in the world, the telemetry in the world is fantastic, but if you don't have a little bit of context about what it is, it's marginally useless. And what you just described is very much saying, how do we get all of this, all these different data sets, but contextualize them so that you can actually make, have some real understanding of what's going on. Yeah, and that's, that's where, in my humble like viewpoint of the world, that's where I differentiate monitoring from observability. So observability is you're, you're taking all the different pieces and you're the human going, I, I, I think I see where the problem might, might be, or it's this combination of things that's causing this problem. So whereas when you're monitoring, you have those individual data points and you're just looking at things that are known. So that could just very well be something that's automated. You're looking at it and you're just reacting to that data 
Whereas in observability, you're kind of looking at it just holistically, like, like you were saying, you're trying to add that context and you know so much, you, you have enough information in your mind to say, I think this or this combination of things is where, where we can start looking to figure out the problem. It's, it, as you were describing it, it's something that's interesting about, you, your memory you were bringing back for me is one of my first networking, uh, network engineering roles in the, you know, in my late 20s, mid 20s, so you know, the, the mid 2000s. And I remember that one of the first things I was given was, hey, we are, we're converting from Cisco PIX to ASA. And like one of your first jobs is, you need to go build it all out and get it ready and you're gonna be in charge of the conversion. I'm like, fantastic. And I walk away from the meeting going, what the heck is a PIX? <laughs> 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 and so I, and one of the biggest things that are at that time, that company used this particular cluster of firewalls for was to handle all the uh, VPN connections, the site-to-site -site VPNs that we used for vendor connections. It was a big Tong contact center company. And so we used them to connect with like financial third parties, whatever, to do process transactions and things. And so I had to learn how to set up a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. And I remember the way that I had to troubleshoot whether it was working or not was watching Kiwi Syslog, watching Syslog and watching for the Ike and Isakim thing messages to come through in a certain order to say, did it work? Did it not work? And if it didn't work, what, what attribute did I miss? But to your point, I'm watching one single data set and trying to decipher based off of watching it over and over again, I think that's what these messages mean. Here's how I can go solve that problem. It's been a few years since that, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. you know that's one way to do this. But what you're describing goes well beyond it, and for good reason. We're not just troubleshooting single instances of a thing on a box or in a single app. Yeah. We're we're trying to solve for problems as organizations that span the entire company. That is multi-layered, nuanced, includes humans, includes various vendor technologies. It cannot just be solved by looking at one or even two data points anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, to your point. You're looking at things for the, the entire company, and sometimes it's it's you're looking for things where it's your customer. Your customer's trying to interact with, with the products offered by the company, and they're just having either a bad experience or not a great experience. It could be better, or maybe it's just, like you were saying, troubleshooting. It's, okay, that, that site-to-site -site VPN could have been, uh, they're at a store, and for some reason the credit card transaction isn't uh, going through. Is it the credit card? Or is it because the application was querying a database that's internal to the company to go look for that product and offer a suggestion for something for some reason? Okay, so the database query was slow. Or was it the network that was slow? Everybody blames the network, but how do you, how do you differentiate? Say, well, I don't, I'm pretty sure I can rule that out, here's why. But when you're looking at that customer transaction, from their vantage point, they just want to purchase something from you, right? They just want to purchase something from the company but on the back end, it could be all types of different things that, that is contributing to the slowness, the performance, that ultimately what you're trying to do is to make that customer happy. Yeah. That's that, you know, at the end of the day, that's that obsession with customer, with the quality mm -hmm. of the customer's experience. And there is no like single metric for that. Right. So yeah, putting it all together, yeah. those, all those different pieces help. So bringing this back around to something you kind of said at the very beginning, the idea of open telemetry or OTEL, how does that play a role in all of this? So we're, I started digging down the rabbit hole of this, right? And so I'm looking at it from the application perspective. So as an application developer, you're adding telemetry to your code and doing so uh, with manual instrumentation. There's automatic instrumentation, there's manual instrumentation. With manual instrumentation, you, you can add telemetry all the way down to like the function level. And you can say, look, I'm calling this function here. Let me add a little more detail about that by adding attributes to a span, for example. Um, so that's one. Then as you start peeling back the layers of the onion, you're finding out that, oh, okay, actually my application is distributed because the credit card service processing is maybe in one microservice. There's another microservice over here that pulls something from a database somewhere. There's another microservice, so on and so forth. So how do you tie all of those together in a, in, in, to understand the complexity of that? And so that's what OpenTelemetry is designed to do uh, in the form of uh, traces. Like, so you're using distributed traces to try and figure out and correlate all that data. And of course, it could be something underneath it. It could be mm -hmm. the infrastructure. It could be the Kubernetes cluster you're running on. It could be the servers that those are running, if they're running on-prem, for example. So mashing all that data together uh, is what I was doing in one of the workshops that I presented earlier. I'm glad and you brought that up. I was just going to ask uh, yeah, like, is there you. something people can do to yeah, <laughs> try <yeah>. this out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you try it out, that workshop's going to be published out to developer.cisco.com. It's going to be turned into a learning lab, and so there's going to be some infrastructure that you could work with to, to try and figure that out on your own. So uh, my goal is to, to start small. 
just one application. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's it's like going out and getting the weather. It's a very small. Just get the concepts down and then start building from that. So then we'll we'll have a little bit more of an advanced workshop. We'll we're, we'll try to do that with with microservices, and then just see how it all kind of comes together. Yeah. And then, a, and then a super advanced lab where you, you'll see the infrastructure underneath it if, if, if uh, all goes well. I think it, that is the form, at least from my perspective, and for our community members, that's the best, this is the most effective way we can approach this, which is let's show you how to do, we have a thing, let's show you how to do the thing and give you the reasons why you want to do that. Um, thank you, Mel. Really appreciate it. You're Mel. very welcome. Thank you for having me. It was a, it was a pleasure. Excellent.